been following the build. I appreciate it. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribing. We got the engine in there hooked up. All the wiring done. Fuel system hooked up. One thing missing is the radiator, and we're going to do some more modifications here in the back end of it. And also connecting the engine to the hydraulic pumps. Right now, it's just running, going through, and make sure everything's good. So, you got a pressure regulator, fuel pump. Got the V bands bolted on there. We're going to go ahead and now it's fired up. There you guys hear this thing. Got all my gauges working, PCM, wheel pump. Probably should have ran it with the serpentine belt on, with the water pump being dry, but you see it runs pretty damn good. Could run a lot better. Just need the O2 sensor hooked up and mass airflow sensor. Might have to get a longer belt actually. Look right here. But go ahead, stay tuned for the rest of this build series. Now this LS swap arm can be a swap arm. But it's nice it comes with this big grommet here. Yeah, I don't really want to drill a hole that big. But I'll probably drill one a little bit bigger than the harness there. Decided I'm going to go inside the cab with the PCM and the relays. Drill my hole in the back there. Should come through right about there. Probably mount the PCM right there because it's out of the way and should be all right. Might make an armrest out of the damn thing. Spider Man. Go start by drilling a pilot hole. Got a hole drilled. Let's go ahead and feed this baby through here. I went through, cleaned this mess up, then also trace all these wires, make sure what they do. Well, what I found out is that those wires run up here to your idiot lights. That tells you, you know, hydraulic pressure, seatbelt, all that bullshit. Well, my plan is to do is to make a bracket to hold my gauges, but use the existing wires and, uh, Run through them, so not to run extra wire. Help everything, keep, keep everything tight and tidy. You know, you want to have a bunch of extra bullshit in there. There we 
go. Went through, removed the old switches or the old lights. Got my seatbelt light, I'm gonna keep that light. My 12 volts in coming. These electronic gauges need that purple wire. So now I just need to pick two of these to splice into and run my gauges. But then also, so I need to build a damn gauge box. So I think we'll work on this first actually. cut this out my plan was to take this have there like that but once you're inside the damn thing I don't like have losing any room and the cabs are already small enough I'm six foot eleven and a half so I think what my plan now is take this plate weld it in there cut that out where it needs to and then on the back side cut that out and put make a plate for it for access so I think it'll look a lot better and just have more room, you know, being flush like this, because I mean, really, how often you're looking at these gauges. We're gonna trace that where we need to cut. This side is a reference line. I'm gonna cut a big square out and then bolt a, place, a plate over it. But this is just so I have a good idea of where to cut. Got both sides cut out. Damn, I looks good. I'm gonna go take this piece, weld it in there. First, we're gonna grind it down here, cleaned up. This plate cut out, access plate, those holes drilled. Maybe it's gonna sit like that. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna tap those holes so I can pull that cover off with ease. Got the cover all made, turned out pretty damn good. I also had one added a light for my seatbelt light. For seatbelt switch and uh, I don't know, it's like adding it. But what we're gonna work on next is taking this, weld it in there and throwing our gauges in, testing them, and seeing all that, how all that works. I also had one added a light for my seatbelt light. For seatbelt switch and uh, I don't know, it's like adding it. But what we're gonna work on next is Taking this, weld it in there, and throwing our gauges in, testing them, and seeing all that, how all that works. Got that all welded in, cleaned up. Let's 
go ahead and throw our gauges in. Got my gauges all wired up. So we got voltage. Oh yeah. Seat belt light. Oh yeah. So now I'm gonna go, I'm gonna ground out my oil pressure and temperature gauge. What those read is ohms. So if I ground it out, it should read hot or zero or something. So let's watch that. You can see when you ground out the sensing wire, they sweep either which way. Well, what I'm doing is very simple. Just grinding out the wire that runs down and senses it. Now where this wire, these two wires will go for oil and temperature. It's right here. Oil pressure gauge or oil pressure sender. Then also the temperature sender. And uh, that's how we're going to control that. So you got those babies dialed in. The stuff in the back dialed in. Now what we're going to want to do is run our power wire to our fuel pump. And then also, we're going to run uh, whatever power wires we need for this guy. I believe this is just ignition on. And then figure out the battery cable situation. Now in my application, I already have the wires ran for the starter. This guy puts out 12 volts, turn the key. That 12 volts will come here to the starter. On this guy, you have your 12 volts hot at all time, which would be your big battery cable. And this baby should theoretically fire up. So, we'll see. Got the wiring all done, now just a matter of hooking it up making a battery location and whatnot turned out pretty slick pretty simple need to get some brackets for that whatnot hope you guys enjoyed the videos like comment subscribe be more to come